Cameron Harold, the Back Pocket COO, best-selling author of Double Double, top-rated speaker. He's spoken to conferences in 18 countries on five continents. His speaking events have average ratings of 9.4 out of 10. He's been covered by The Wall Street Journal, Fortune Magazine, Bloomberg, Success Magazine, The Washington Post, The New York Times, The Globe and Mail, and The National Post. The number one thing we learned was from an Olympic coach, and he talked to us about how high-performance athletes will visualize and look into the future and see their event as it's happening. He talked about Mary Lou Retton, who would have her routine on index cards, and she would pace around the floor reading the index cards before her Olympic routine, or how downhillers like Jeff Hume would actually visualize their event in their mind, and they would ski the race in their mind before the run or high jumpers that we've seen on TV at the Olympics will be, they'll have their eyes closed before the jump and they're kind of rocking and they, you can kind of see them go in their mind up and over the bar. They're in the process of visualization. And he was talking to us about how a business of any size can visualize their business three years out. And he gave us the analogy of a home builder who does construction and builds your dream home or takes an old kitchen and makes it beautiful. The way they do that is they get the homeowner to rip the ideas out of their mind and share it with an architect and the architect can draw up the blueprints and hand the blueprints to the workers. And now the workers can read the owner's mind without ever talking to the owner. Well, if you and your business can actually visualize your event or your business three years out and explain what your business looks and feels like to all of your employees, to your suppliers, to your customers, to the market, then people can help you build it. But if you keep the movie inside your mind to yourself, no one will be able to help you build that movie. But what a painted picture is, is a three-page or a four-page description of a business three years out. Almost like you lean into the future in a time machine and go three years forward and video everything you can see three years out. Come back to today and write down what you see. You're trying to imagine what you can see out in the future. When we were building 1-800-GOT-JUNK, we would lean out and say, could you imagine being featured on Letterman or making the junction a famous tourist destination or being a case study at Harvard Business School or being on Dr. Phil? When all of those things were put up on the wall, being on Oprah, none of them had happened. But some of them within months, um, 16 months after we put on the wall being on Oprah, we were on Oprah. A year after putting on, or two years after putting on Dr. Phil, we've been on, we've now been on 15 times. Virtually everything on this wall has happened because we could imagine what was happening. We didn't know how it would happen. We didn't know what happened in the three year period. We just knew what the picture would look like. It's very similar to a jigsaw puzzle. If you see the picture on the front of a box, when you get all the pieces, you know how to put the pieces together to make the picture happen. Well, you and your employees need a way to actually see what's inside of the owner's mind because the owner has the clear picture. You need to rip it out in a way. The concept is, is conceive, believe, and achieve. It's about you having the vision in your mind, getting people to buy into that vision, sharing it with everyone, and then figuring out how to make it happen. But their mantra on this bus trip 40 year, 50 years ago was you're either on the bus or off the bus. And what they meant by that was you're either part of the scene or you're not. You either get it or you don't. You either see what we see or you don't see it. And it's the same with your employees. You can't have the wrong people in your organization because they'll ruin the trip, literally. You need to obsess about getting the right people on the bus. You need to obsess about getting the wrong people off the bus. And then you need to make sure everyone's in the right seat. Because often you'll have the right person, but they're just not in that right seat yet. We learned a process from a company in Montreal named Mad Science. They did a group interview. They'd bring eight candidates into the room at the same time for the one job. They'd have one person from their company interviewing all eight people. And they'd only ask a few random questions. What do you do for fun? What's the most stressful time in your life? What are your favorite books? What are your favorite movies? What are your favorite TV shows? Trick question. Um, who is the best candidate in the room and why do you think they are? If we were hiring two people, you plus somebody else, who would you bring in? 
And all we're looking for in this interview is cultural fit and leadership. If they don't fit the culture of the organization, if they're not the right duck, and they're not strong leaders, I don't care if they have the skill to do the job yet. Culture trumps strategy every time. You think about Google and Microsoft, who's the most talked about company on the planet right now? No, Apple. <laughs> Trick question. Google trumps Microsoft because Google cares about culture. Google only hires people who are a cultural fit. Microsoft hires a bunch of engineers that work in their little rooms by themselves in the dark. I've been to Microsoft's campuses, I've been to Google's campus. Microsoft is a morgue, Google is a place you want to hang out. And they hire equally as smart people, but they focus on culture first, leadership, and then the skill set. They would find a way to handcuff the person to the business. They would find those top five or ten percent players and make sure that they found the reasons that those person would never leave and they would make sure they handcuff them to the company. For some it's results only work environment, for some it's flex time, for some it's better pay, for some it's profit sharing, for some it's whatever. But you find those A players and you make sure they never go for at least five to ten years. That's how you start to propel growth. Superstar sales performer, um, somebody who's like overachieving but they're the cancer in the organization, you have to fire them. The key is when you're getting rid of these people, everyone will say, well I can't get rid of them, they're producing half my volume. So the question you ask yourself is, what would you do if tonight on your way home you found out that Bob was killed? Bob got hit by a car. What would you do tomorrow to replace Bob? What would the top five things you would have to do be to replace that guy? Make that list. And then tomorrow morning, go into your operation, fire Bob, and start on number one. Who in the room likes wearing a tie? Do you, okay, a few people are lying, this is good. Okay, so um, on a Saturday morning when you're hungover, do you wake up and put on a new shirt and tie? Yes. Well, because you're working Saturday. <laughs> Most people don't love wearing a shirt and tie. Most people also know that you read the book Dress for Success back in the late 80s, so now you're putting on the blue suit, the white shirt, and the red power tie because it makes you an authority figure. And what it's doing to your customers is it's intimidating us, not connecting with us. Your customers don't want to be intimidated, they want to connect with you. If you hear five traits that describe you, I'd like you to stand up. Do you often feel filled with energy? Are you often flooded with ideas? Are you driven? Are you restless? Are you unable to keep still? That's five. Are you often working on little sleep? Can you be euphoric? Do you get easily irritated by minor obstacles? <laughs> Do you burn out periodically? Do you act out sexually? <laughs> Do you feel persecuted by those who do not accept your vision? So everyone look around the room really quickly at the number of people that stood up. But that is actually not a list of entrepreneurial traits. That is the list of traits that a doctor would use to diagnose you with bipolar. <laughs> Those are literally, that's the checklist when you go in for manic depression. That's the checklist the doctor reads to you. You all stood up and said you had it. Okay? Yes, we are entrepreneurs. We're different. Hi, I'm Cameron Harold. What you just saw were a series of clips from speaking events that I've done. In all my events, my content is similar, but I really customize it to fit your audience. I'll chat with you and your team beforehand to really get a good feel for your group. Then when they hear me speaking, it'll feel like it was created just for them, which it will be. Please contact me at the information here, and I look forward to an awesome speaking event with your group.